What is going on, people? Today, we're going to talk about why do most online businesses fail? I have a question for you. How many people do you personally know who are under the age of 25 with a Lamborghini or a Bentley or somehow in luxury car? How many people you know or casually know a neighbor, someone that you see with this? And on the flip side, I want you to put into the comments, how many people who know someone clearly over 50, an older guy driving a Porsche, a Cadillac, or a Bentley? How, you know, how many of you know these kind of things? Because if you're living like I am living, you will see that there are many, many people who don't drive those kind of cars. And I'm getting to a point here. One of the things that happens with online businesses is there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of craziness. And the reality is you're looking at one to three years to really build your online business, regardless of what it is. If it's a blog, if it's a YouTube channel, if it's a Facebook group, you're looking at one to three years before you see any real fruit. Which kind of brings me to my first point, why online businesses fail. And I'm going to get to that in a minute because I'm going to help out the broke Dick Dannys of the world and the penniless Priscilla's. So hold on a second. Don't buy anything just yet. There we go. Put this together today. But the number one reason that so many people fail to make money online is the internet is not real. Seriously. That's why you have so many people who will come on a YouTube channel, who will come on a blog or a Facebook page and they will say stuff that they just normally would not say because they can do it under anonymity and they do not take the internet as serious as they should. It's very serious business. There's a lot of money to be made here. It's very serious. Sometimes it's more real than real life. But people have this laissez-faire, this casual attachment to the Internet because they don't feel that it's real. They feel it's like an alternative world. And that's one of the biggest hangups of making money online because it's not real. And I've told the story before and I'll tell it to you again. A friend of mine, he put up a website and when he made that first sale, that's when it became real. Whereas for me, I toiled for five, almost six months because I knew it was real because I had been making money from the internet in the capacity of eBay, Amazon, and Craigslist for years. So I didn't have that limitation or that block that this isn't real. I'm wasting my time. This isn't the best thing to be doing. This can't work out. All those guys online are scammers. That is a big, big issue. Now, another thing that really kills you. Ridiculous, compressed timelines. I'm going to say this with all absolute honesty, and I'm going to assure you that I'm not pulling your leg. It's probably going to take you a good two years before you sort out a lot of the kinks of your business. And it's probably going to take you three years before you start really earning some serious money. The timeline, based upon hustler porn, based upon what I call false testimonies or no testimonies of omission. They took the course. They did it right. They did it real. It worked out. But they admitted that this person had 20 years of experience and a lot of contacts. Just essentially all I had to do was just turn on the spigot and they got money coming in. You're not going to build a Internet business in a year or two that's going to be wildly successful unless you are exceptional or you got lucky. Those two parts. That's it. You're exceptional. You got lucky. Cards fell your way. That is not most of us. Didn't happen to me. Well, actually, it kind of happened to me. But I'll address that, too. Now, this is going to be a hard one. And 
this kind of goes back to the first one where the internet isn't real. You're going to need operating capital, 500 to 1500 bucks a month. I know you can cheap, you can do it cheaply and you can grind out so much from that without spending any money. You're going to spend time, you're going to spend money, you're going to spend equity. You're going to need 500 to 1500 dollars per month above and above and beyond what you need to live on to make money online today. A few years ago, no, you didn't need to do that. If you want to get into affiliate marketing, which I know nothing about, you could possibly make money for less, but I don't know about it, so I'm not going to speak on it. But from what I know and how I make money, you're going to need 500 to 1500 bucks. Uh, you can go cheap, which usually will backfire on you. So the lack of operating capital. And number four, no real plan. None. It's called blog and hope, Facebook and hope, YouTube and hope. There's no definitive plan. There's nothing where you sat down with pen and paper and you you wrote down until your head hurt because you were actually thinking. None of that. No, 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 no. It's like, well, Charlie did it and Charlie's making four hundred and five hundred thousand. And seriously, put down how many folks that you know under the age of 25 in your locale? And yeah, even I'll even go California, New York, because I know there's a lot of young kids driving Lambos. But how often do you see that? Put it in the comments. All right. Number five, not knowing the difference between a real business model and a trend. Pokemon was a trend. It was. People uh, set up YouTube channels. People got all into it. People did a lot of long-term things for a short-term thing. It was just a fad. It lasted about six months, I believe, and then it was gone. You have people who are building business models, investing a lot of capital and time and energy into Facebook marketing on something that is a trend and that is something that is not long-term scalable. There is a store... Not too far from here. It's called All About the Bunts. And they sell cakes. That's all they sell. And they do a corporate program. The store has been in business six years, seven years. Why? They have a business model. They did not go for the trendy. Krispy Kreme, what do they sell? They sell donuts. Plain donuts, chocolate-covered donuts, curlers. It's not complicated. They have a business plan. Uh, Krispy Kreme made a lot of money through charitable donations. I mean, um, they had a program where you sell a box of donuts and they would keep half and you keep half. They did it for years. They had a plan. They had a, a purpose. Number six, no experience. And this run right here is something that really got me. Everything that I did not know how to do well Everything that I was uh, lackadaisical in or not really sure of myself didn't do that well. But stuff that I knew, I knew it well, it always blew up. It always did well. So this is one of the reasons that I am just not jumping on to any of these other things. This is the reason the content of this channel has not changed because I know staying true, staying steady, it wins short term, it wins long term, it wins mid term. It's like, hey, you come here, you know what you're going to get. You know, I'm not going to like, hey, you know, you guys should be buying Bitcoin. Hey, you guys should start a Shopify store. Hey, you guys should be doing Amazon FBA. Hey, you guys should be doing. I don't do any of that stuff because I know it's not going to last. Because the people who are doing it are hopping on trends. Uh, there's someone I'm not going to say his channel, but he's stopped hopping on trends and he started to kneel in uh, to create a niche for himself and his channel has blown up because he's talking about the same thing and he stopped all this trend hopping around. I'm not going to do it because I know it's no good for those of you who are part of the hustler kung fu mindset who want to build something that makes money long time. You know, me make money long time, not that short time stuff, not that five minute stuff, not that 15 minute stuff, but that 
decade stuff or that two decade stuff, you know, like A.G. Gadsden. Get you some millions. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be quick. It's going to take time, effort, and attention. It's just a reality. Number seven, and this one is hands down one of my most idiosocratic things that I see. There are people, and I'm not saying you guys because you've been here, but there are people who don't want to be scammed. Not a problem. But they have no problem scamming other people. Give me a course, Glendon, where I can make that quick money. Come on, give me the course. You know, if you don't tell the truth, you don't put everything, that's fine. As long as, you know, as long as you don't scam me, but we can scam all these other folks. If I lied, and this is a really good reference point. When I first came on YouTube, I had many people in my ear, Glendon, Glendon. Don't tell them that storage auctions are as hard as they are. Don't tell them. You can make more money. And you know they were right. I could have made more money, but did I do that? No, I was like, look, I just want you to know that you can buy a unit and a canoe can fall on your head. That kept me in the game longer because it's like, well, you know, it tells the truth. I got so many emails like, hey, I was out there on the auction trail and I read your book. And I, I, it's like, I feel like a pro. You know, they don't even think, they don't even know I'm new. This is how good this information is. That made me feel proud. Long term, you don't lie. You don't have to remember what you told this person versus that person. I had someone on Facebook, and I don't know where he got this from. And he was like, because uh, we're going back and forth about Bitcoin. He's like, you sold it four grand. It's like, no, I didn't. I didn't sell it four. He got me completely confused with someone else. Showed in the video, which was made when Bitcoin was still going up, where everyone told me I was a fool to sell. I was crazy. And he was like, well, I guess since you did a video in your car, it's true. One of the things, and it, 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 you see it all over the place. People want to take shortcuts to get the money, but they don't want any shortcuts coming on their money. As long as you try to serve people, even if you make mistakes, I made a lot of mistakes on my first book. There was typos. There was uh, incoherent sentences. There was all kinds of people still bought. They still bought because I was telling the truth and I was helping people and I was serving my fellow man. People even bought the, you know, and some people who bought that first book, they bought Pimp and Craigslist. And the rule of writing, if you write a book and they don't like the first one, they're never going to buy another one. I found that to be... Brilliantly untrue in my case, patently untrue. You know, it's like I even got emails like, man, you know, the first book, I'm buying this because the first book, yeah, it had, it had uh, errors and typos and stuff, but it worked. And this book's much better and it works. So this whole, I can go out and get into Kindle stuff and scam people and I can get into Bitcoin stuff or cryptocurrencies and scam people because, so you know who's making the money? The exchanges. They make money regardless. Coinbase made a billion dollars in transaction fees last year. And that's a billion with a B. And eight is a big one. Refuse to talk to customers. Don't want to talk to them. Mm -mm, I ain't talking to them. I'm not going to have a conversation with them. I'm not going to ask them what they like. I'm not going to serve it. I just refuse. Just mm -mm, nope. Nope, not me. I ain't talk. No, I'm not talking to no customers. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Ain't doing it. Talking to one to five of your customers every month could give you valuable insights on your business. You don't have to talk to everybody. Just one to five every month. You get all so much feedback, so much. A lot of them. And the reason is it goes back to no experience. They don't even know they're supposed to talk to customers. They don't even know that they're supposed to have surveys. That's what the corporations do. You know, those corporations that have been in business for decades or a few cases, a few hundred years. They don't know nothing. And number nine, killer, killer, killer. I have people telling me that I need to automate what I'm doing. And I will automate what I'm doing once I get through figuring out what y'all really want. Because I don't really know. I know some of the stuff, like the credit thing went well. 
Uh, some other stuff went well, but we're probably six, seven months away from automation because I got to talk to you. I got to figure out what you want. I got to figure out what you need. We ain't there yet. You have people who are trying to automate something that doesn't work. <laughs> They're trying to automate an undefined business model or a business model that's maybe 25% complete, maybe 30%, maybe 50 It, it ain't complete, and they're trying to automate it without testing, um, without talking to people, without um, really buckling down and saying, hey, this thing ain't ready for prime time. It can, hurt. It can serve a few people, but I don't need to automate it because if I automate it, then my errors and mistakes will be magnified. Whereas if I keep it small while I work out the bugs or as a friend told me, working out the uglies. Then once I get it worked out and I get it set up, then I can automate it and I can put some paid traffic on it. But not a minute before. Yeah, a lot of people out here who are trying to automate water to customers who want Kool-Aid. Hey, look, the water machine's working just fine. See, it's churning out that water but they want Kool-Aid or they want brandy or they want wine or they want donuts. They don't want water, but your automated water machine is working efficiently. It's just selling a product that no one wants because you didn't talk to your customers. You didn't validate your business model. This happens all of the time. And number 10, laziness. <laughs> Lazy as the day is long. Lazy as I'm just... I don't mean to castigate all millennials because I know there's some millennials out there who are really hardworking. They're enterprising. A lot of millennials, millennials built Facebook, millennials built YouTube, millennials built uh, Snapchat. You don't build these things and be a lazy slacker. It's just impossible. They weren't taking vacations when they were building Facebook. They were like this coding, coding and coding. So there's a certain group of select Millennials who do put out, who understand that building wealth and creating companies takes time, effort, dedication, and some endurance. They know this, and they put it in. But a lot of millennials are just lazy. There is no rhyme, rhythm. They're just lazy. They feel that they need to have this wonderful life without earning it, without building it, without serving people, without helping people. It's just about me. And that is what's driving this Bitcoin market. I feel that Bitcoin should be around three to four grand. And once all of the scammers, because there's a lot of market manipulation, that's probably what it's going to be. I could be wrong. Don't take this as financial advice. If you want to buy some Bitcoin, go ahead and buy some on the dip and hold. Go ahead, knock yourself out. I'll watch you. And if you win, congratulations. If you lose, I am going to laugh at you and I'm going to clown at you. I am. I'm just letting you know because uh, one of the things, and I found out that I'm addicted to Facebook. I, you know, and this is really, it shouldn't be surprising because I felt it coming on, but I just jumped into the water. I've had to like monitor my Facebook time. I've had to pull myself out of it. And I mean, like right now, I'm logged out of Facebook on my phones. And I have to actively log in to get in there. And it's really enhanced my productivity because creating these courses, which I'll get into in a minute, is rough, rough, rough. So there are your 10 reasons why people fail to make money online. It's not because you're not smart. It's not because you're not hardworking. You just ain't putting enough in it. It takes years to make money online, long term. Now, if you want to get into some trend stuff and you want to get in and out, Fine. Uh, there's someone who purportedly made two hundred and fifty thousand dollars trading um, Bitcoin. But they still have their job. And there was this post on their Facebook page where they were sick and they were trying to get their sick leave. And I was like, wait a minute, you got two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You worried about some sick leave that don't add up. You'd be like. I can understand keeping your job. I understand and I encourage that. But you got two hundred fifty K that you made. Why are you sweating some sick leave? Just saying. There's an incongruency there. 
Things don't match up. All right, so let's get off into this good old-fashioned Hustlers Kung Fu University. All right, for uh, all of my broke dick ban Dannys and penniless Priscilla, this is what I got for you. All right, I am putting all of my books and mini courses in this one course. Well, I should say Patty's doing it. Uh, let's see, where where's Patty on this? Because it's going to be about 20 plus books and mini courses. So we're at, okay, a lot of information, a lot of stuff is coming. So, but there's already an hour, three hours, three hours plus the books, probably nine hours of content there. And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to blow this up because you can't see it. This is the code. Whoa, we went a little too far. All right, this is the code. You can use this to get anything at Hustlers Kung Fu University. The links are below the video, and I'll leave this up for the night. So you can get 40% off. You get this, and uh, I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to leave this here for a second because this is the code. I had some issues with one code. And hopefully this worked out. But if we have issues, just let me know. Email Patty. Say, hey, code didn't work or something like that. And we will make you whole. But the code is Thursday. I don't think that's spelled correctly, but that's the code. And that's how we're going to do it. So let me go back into. Oh, whoa. Actually, there we go. All right. So this is 99 bucks. And you get 40% off. That's a lot of value. And that's for my Broke Dick Dannys and Penless Priscilla's. Um, yeah, she's adding stuff here. All right. And uh, just to let you know, I've moved some stuff around. Got a new logo. Hustlers Kung Fu University. Everything's coming here. And uh, Fat Cat Secrets, which I'm still working on. That's going to probably take two weeks to really get all that done. I brought back the Never back, never Broke Action Pack, which I've added some more stuff to. You can use the 40% off on that if you so desire. There you go. And you can poke around and see. Because every day this is going to change a little bit because I'm going to move stuff around. I'm going to make it a little bit better. I'm going to, let's see. There we go. I'm just going to work on it. Your best deal is Hustle Camp. I am raising the price of that um, today because there's some more stuff that's going to come. It's going to be exciting. Uh, Tax Slayer. So here's the trajectory for those of you who care. I'm working on Fat Cat Secrets, Building the Blocks of Wealth. That's all I'm going to work on until I'm finished. Then I'm going to jump on the Tax Slayer stuff. And the reason that I am working on Fat Cat Secrets is I know that that's going to be the hardest one I'm doing. And someone asked, will I be talking about trust? Yes, but that's going to come much later. Because the thing is, if you have no assets that are free and clear, what do you need a trust for? I mean, there's no reason for you to even have a trust unless you have assets that you can put in that trust. And you could do it a revocable trust, which means you could change your mind anytime you want to. Or you could do it a revocable trust, which means the assets leave you. You no longer own them. They're gone forever. But you don't have to pay taxes on it. And we'll get in all that. So that's what's going on. The link's below. Jump on it. All right, so let me get into the chat room and see what's going on with the folks. Make sure that we are out of that. What's up, Johnny Walton? Diana, Sense Reality, AKW Beats, Kindle Vision. We have a lot of Tesla and Marcy, Mar 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 Maseratis. Those are leased. I guarantee you those are leases. Fester. <laughs> Sis reality. Another reason why online businesses fail because they see children and teenagers do it and they think it's a piece of cake to do it. That's really, that's real. That's real sense of reality. Pharaoh, what's up? What's up, Archer Angel? Expat crypto, crypto. Yeah, mission is like those fitness ads where they fatten up a bodybuilder in the before photo, then they randomly look straight at a few weeks later in the after photo. That is a common tactic. Uh, Fester. 
I wouldn't spend that kind of money on the car, even if I had it. What's up, Derek Brown? What's up, this dude Bakes? Johnny Wall, I didn't know there are any kids with Benzes Mercedes. Oh, yeah. But see, the, the thing that you don't know means that in your area that that's very rare, which is my point I was trying to make. Got a buddy with a nice new beaner. It's pretty snazzy, too. What's up, Wild Jones Report? AKW Beats. Three of my online producer friends make over 15K a month selling their instrumentals. That's why I started hanging out with them. Uh, 15K a month is very, very strong. That's $185,000 a year. That's the kind of money you can build wealth with. Good for you, Fester. I'm going to start acting as a sole proprietor. What's the best change up my business to it? Uh, I'm going to start as a sole proprietor. When What would be best to change up my business to an LLC? Depending on what your business model is, what do you want to be doing? The best car I ever owned was the one I bought, the Hannah Thompson. Thank you, Diana. Lamo, what's up? Sure thing, Nightwolf. Uh, actually, most folks are not lazy. Laziness is like number 10 because there's a lot of people who try, but they don't understand the framework in which building an online business operates, so they give up way too soon. What's up, Al Gordon? Wired coaching, 16 months in. Cool, cool. <laughs> what's up young Brandon Lamo great information I was just talking to my son that is six about being sloppy and lazy it's not happening that the reason I'm so stern with him just talk to him and he understands good for you Lamo you're setting a sterling example for that young man what's up Tony Lee thank you Lamo conjure what's going on Since reality, what cars do you drive, Glendon? <laughs> you drive the car you still have when you was poor. No. Um, I'll talk about that. What I do is call, I don't call, I don't let lifestyle creep hats to me, happen to me. I set a budget, and regardless of how much money I earn above that budget, I don't go above that budget. So I have some pretty snazzy cars, but they're paid for. Uh, there was a post on Facebook, you know, show the car that sales got you, and I posted mine. And both of mine are paid for, but many people will play the leasing game. But once again, it's a game, and if you're not playing all of the parts of the game, you could lose. But um, let's see. I should have. Uh, let's see. You know what? I know where I'll go. Go to the gram, which I have not really posted on, so can't really see that. There we go. Oh, that's one. That's 2004. And that's the other one. There we go. So that's what I ride in. I have two cars that are paid off. I'm actually got to redo my insurance because it could be cheaper. But I bought those cars because I like them, and I plan on keeping them to the wheels. I mean, the, the Audi's are 2004. So. Jay Cleveland. Rich people live like they're broke, poor, and people, and broke people live like they're rich. Not exactly. I should say this, and I'm not trying to beat you up, but I live in a neighborhood where there's some extremely wealthy people. They're just around the corner on Mount Parent, and these people live in two and three million dollar homes. Rich people spend money, but the truly rich have assets that support their spending. So let's just say you got Billy the millionaire up on Mount Parent. He spends three hundred grand a month. Guarantee you, Billy the millionaire has assets that produce five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars per month. So that's how they play the game, because they spent, believe that. But they have created financial instruments to support the spending where broke people try to do it on credit. 
What's up, Less Than Pie? What's uh, good? Let me do something here. And what the heck? Hold on. Here we go. Uh, Stefan, what's up, Glenn? Have you had to tackle job fatigue in the pursuit of your independence? How did you overcome it? That's a great question. It's very timely because I am going through it right now. Hence the reason the morning streams have disappeared. I couldn't do it. Uh, yesterday, I was so tired. I mean, just straight up. Uh, it was a 12-hour day. The day is going to probably be another 12-hour day because it takes 10 to 12 hours of research, doing stuff, putting graphics to put together one or two hours of training. Now, once I get back in the mode, it will not take that long, but this week and next week are probably going to be some bears for me because the thing is, this opportunity costs. Like, I could um, continue to do the live streams because the live streams in the morning bring in revenue. But if I don't get these courses built, then I'm just talking a lot of smackety smack. So, uh, evening streams, and I build courses during the day, and that's probably going to be my life for the next several months. That's just it. I mean, that's the reality of it because there's a lot of stuff coming. So the way that I handle it is to make choices. Also, if you have an energy problem, you must find an hour a day to work out that will help you tremendously with your energy problems. Kelly back. Keep up the work so people may wake up. That's funny. Johnny, commercial driving lease purchase deals. You go, you buying a truck? Eric Williams, people don't sell, they hope. Ask more to get more. That's true. Yeah, that sick leave don't add up. I mean, I'm just sitting there. I just see stuff. Like, I don't call anyone out on Facebook. I don't even get into all that. It's just I see stuff. I see one thing. You're saying this over here, but you're living this way over here, and it don't add up. You make it 250k on some Bitcoin, and you you stressing some sick leave. That doesn't make any sense, because typically, uh, most folks, if they had made that kind of money, they would quit that job. Nightwolf. Damn right persistence will take you there. Uh, I got off my ass and I found your channel around the same time. Been following you for two months. Good deal, Nightwolf. Uh, Rugged Cause, dude, you're so correct on talking to customers. I had a number set up and was so afraid to talk. I deleted the number and they were calling, but for, but for complaints. Is that normal? Well, here's a here's the thing. You could turn the complaint into money. Let's say you have someone who calls you up and they're all disgruntled, right? Here's some, some insights. Uh, this happened a long time ago, but this is probably one of the best cases. I had a lady who bought a sofa from me off Craigslist. We delivered it and everything. Then she calls up and she's like, well, it's got a stain on it. Now, I knew this sofa didn't have a stain on it. And I just listened to her. And this this is I was way more customer centric than I am now. And I need to get back into that. And I just listened to her and I said, got a question for you and she's like what you having a hard day and she was just silent she's like well yes i am i was like what happened you know i just want to compl- i was like no, no go ahead what happened so she unloads on me for 15 minutes her husband's leaving her <clears throat> she's got problems and she talks to me 15 minutes and she starts crying and stuff and Then she apologizes profusely. She's like, I just don't know what's wrong with me. Typically, if a person's mad and and the anger is greater than, you know, like a little stain, like I would not sell a sofa with a big stain on it. So if there was a stain, it was barely, you could barely able to see it. And I knew it wasn't. It was something else. And if you give people, that's why Patty's here. Because y'all can talk to Patty. You can ask Patty questions. And she doesn't know she'll ask me. Because I, I remember, here's another one. I answered a question on YouTube. And the person bought a product, a very $1,500 product, 30 minutes later. 
And this is why you got so many folks who don't want to talk to anyone, which goes back to automation. Like, I don't have to talk to anybody. Uh, you can ha if you have a business that's automated and you're not talking to anybody, you're probably leaving 50 to 75 you have 50 to 75 percent of your money on the table. Uh, twin 17. Hey, Glenn, are you still making a course for cryptocurrency with LLC business? Why? Yes, I am. Because this is one of the things that I have to do for putting this course. I have this knowledge, right? And I build all these LLCs. But you know what? They change that stuff all the time. So before I put it in the course, I got to check it. And I got to research it and I got to listen to some boring accountants. I actually had to call up a dude, spend 300 bucks to get some, you know, it was like, okay, is this just it? Will this fly? And that's coming later. But yeah. CZ, I don't know. I work with a guy who won the lottery a few years back. He gets 180K for that. He still works and tracks his sick leave. Uh, he's just a cheap bastard. You're getting 180K a year and you're tracking your, that's just, you're just cheap. That's all it is. And you got people like that. And he's making 180K a year. He got his job. Like, what do y'all do? I'm just curious. Because that's just ridiculous. Diana Thompson, I'm a bean counter. <laughs> Jay Cleveland, that makes sense. Izzy Terrace, hello. Can you write up a car as a business expense? Hold on. Do, 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 do. You can do more than that. That that vehicle is in the, the company name. So yes. See, I don't teach y'all stuff I don't do. I teach y'all stuff that I do. So yes, you can. Young Brandon, I've been listening to Buffett like a millionaire over and over trying to convince my parents that I'm not going to finance the car. I keep the one I have until I have it. Just do that. And like this thing, like don't fight with your parents. Just nod your head, be cool, and just do what you're going to do. Because the thing is, they are geared and built on a world that no longer exists. It worked for them, but this world doesn't exist, and they don't understand that because they're not climbing anymore. They're up here. All the stuff that they had to do to get up here, that doesn't exist anymore. And they don't realize it because they're up here. And they ain't looking down. They ain't like, whoa. They're, they're just like, keep, they look, they're looking up to the next level. So don't do it. Pretty much, Charlton. Uh, Hot Song Beats. If you're talking about the YouTube course that teaches you how to save money by starting the channel, that yes, that will be, in fact, hit secret. It is not there yet, but it will be. Uh, shotgunning elite Grant Cardone says 70% of America's little pay. They do. There are people, I posted an article on my page where people were making six figures are still living check to check. It's called income lifestyle creep. Like when I was making all of that money consulting last year, I did not live like I was making that money. I have a ceiling to my income. Uh, this year I've actually lowered it. You know what? The most money I can spend per month. And you're going to think it's funny. Seven G's. Once I get to seven G's, I can't spend no more. You have more money, but I can't spend no more. It's like a, a short or a put or a call. You know, it's like once you get to this level, then you stop. That's it. And I don't care how much money you make. If you do not develop financial discipline to stop spending money, you're going to run into some problems. I don't care if you're a millionaire. You're going to run into some problems. Now, this is something else I will say and I will admit if my income was to take a dramatic jump, and I'm talking about like three, four million a year, that that number would be reset to about 50 grand a month. See, I'm not against spending. I'm not against doing nice stuff for yourself. I just think if I was making, you know, 50 grand a month, I could have bought that BMW. Well, yeah, uh, that's kind of how that went. Uh, that's why I bought it so fast. But I saved up for it. And I know it sounds like, wait a minute, you're making money and you're saving. Mm hmm. You got to save up because I went in that dealership and I talked to and I, 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 it was a simple conversation. Would you take six thousand dollars off if I pay cash? He was like a mannequin. He was doing the mannequin. He's like, what did you say? He was stunned. So 
you got to make moves like that because, like I said, I personally believe we're having a recession. I think it's coming 15 to 24 months, and I'm going to be ready. I'm going to have my cash stacked up. I'm going to be making more cash, and I'm going to start making more moves because everything's going to be on sale. Everything's going to be dirt cheap. People will be cheap. Businesses will be cheap. Inventory will be cheap. It's coming. And another reason that I had to get off of Facebook and reduce my Facebook exposure was Facebook will make you do some stuff that's unreasonable because there's so many other folks doing it. I am human, and the uh, fear of missing out, it was just like, you need to buy some cryptocurrency. You need, what? dude, wake up. Stop that, because this is not everybody. Because remember that question I asked you, like, how many of you saw all these fancy cars? That's America. That's the real America. Johnny Walking, yes, this person a truck, I don't have enough for a down payment. Now, once again, for all you truck drivers, you're buying an asset to make money. That's a totally different ballgame. You're not buying a car to ride around in and impress Big Booty Betty. You try to make some money. That's a whole different thing. Uh, I would actually create the LLC first before I did that. I would not do that as a sole proprietor. Oh, the sick leave is real, Erica. That Earl Nightingale stuff is good. It's good. Most truck and lease purchase deals aren't that good for uh, serious reasons. You, you and Johnny Walden and you and Charlene, y'all can talk about that. My present vehicle first is going out. You know, when I was poor and I, I was married and I had a family, right around the corner it was Northside Hospital. I had a car that the battery was gone. Couldn't recharge it. You know, for two months, I would park my car in the parking deck. And I would park it at such an angle that I could go down because it was a five speed and I could start my car. And that's how I started my car for two months because the charge from work would last until the next day. But, you know, it wouldn't hold the charge for longer than a day or two. And it'd be dead. That's how I got to work. I was, and I was, you know, we lived in a place where there was a hill, so I was always parking on hills. I was parking on hills to start up my car because I did not have the probably the thirty to forty dollars that it cost to go get the battery back then. So, young Brandon, do what you got to do, man. It's going, it's going to build character. <laughs> you, you, you'll be doing creative parking. <laughs> I'm laughing because I was there. Oh, man, I forgot about that until you mentioned that. There's a lot of stories like that. Um, uh, Conjure, question. I have a question about the technique you use in disruptive money course, and how often is the discussion thread course checked? Uh, since those courses have gone, let's talk about that. You're talking about support. One of the things that happened, and this is just the strangest thing, um, you, you got to go through Patty to ask a question because what was happening was ridiculous with those discussion threads because essentially it would become a thing where I can be sitting there all night answering questions and stuff, and that just is not a good allocation of my time. My time is building courses. So if you got a question, ask Patty. Uh, twins, you're welcome, whatever that was. Uh, Bodacious 402, do you have a course on business credit without personal guarantee? What's up, G? Bodacious, here's the thing. Getting business credit with no personal guarantee is still possible. I don't say this because there are people prostituting it, but it's going to take you one, let me know, let's say two to three years to get there. And you're going to have to show income in your business. And you're going to have to provide financials. It's possible, but you are not just going to walk in there with a smile and they're going to give you the world. It's, no, that's not happening. No, you cannot write off your job as a business expense. Uh, there's a, that's in the course. 
because there's a way that I do it that no one even talks about. But for me, I will tell you, I don't drive that much. I only live three miles from here. I think I put 6,000 miles on my car last year. So mileage deduction means nothing. Plus, I can't use it going to work. There's another way, and that will be in the course, and it, it will shock you. It will shock you. Being a creative person, that's a beautiful thing. He has a six-figure job with the federal government. How many kids does he have? Since reality, I have a video about the two-tier economy. I have a video about the two-tier economy discussing six-figure workers being poor or in poverty. Well, if you're in New York, Los Angeles, uh, Austin, Texas, six figures ain't nothing. With the average cost of a one bedroom, fifteen hundred to two grand. I mean, you do the math on that. It's fifteen hundred. That's that's eighteen grand a year. It's two grand. That's twenty five grand. That's that's twenty five percent of your income. So, there's a lot of places where six figures, you're poor, which sounds strange, but it is true. Uh, nope, Chris. That's funny. Bear market second day. Cause, and that's another thing, too, why I had to. I was starting. I was I was throwing shade and I was throwing trash. I was doing all kind of trash talking because in my heart of hearts, I feel that um, Bitcoin is going to crash and burn. It's going to leave a lot of people. It's going to harm a lot of people. It's really it's going to harm a lot of people because they're, they're not seeing it for what it is. Its original purpose was to be a currency, which you really can't use it for that. And there were some other things in the manifesto. With that said, I believe there's probably 500 people scattered around the world that are manipulating the price of Bitcoin every day. And once they run out of new money, flesh, fresh money, it's going to fall. Because this is how it's working, because there's no there's no like this phone, this phone has value. But this phone, you know, this leather cover it was on the cow one day and then this glass, it was in the earth and they transmuted all this stuff to value. It has present day value and I can sell it on Craigslist and still get money for it. You can't do that with Bitcoin. And that's one of the reasons. Just some of my fundamental principles of wealth building are just not present with Bitcoin. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm tired of fighting with people. If you want to be running yourself to the slaughter you want your throat cut fine I, I tried to warn you i'm out of it and i'm just going to focus on building these courses for you guys I, i've been good i have not said anything in like a day <laughs> it is just hard it's so hard uh let's see i jumped Let's see. Is the great money manager strategy is called a stop loss in the stock market? I mean, uh, seriously, it's just I have to like my my spending last year I was, you know, buying all this stuff. I spent like 20k on my credit card every month, right? Now, my limit, even though it's not the credit card limit, it's like 3 grand. Once I spend 3 grand, I'm done. Pay it off and I'm done. You know, you just got to do that. Oh, yeah, Travis, he's a good friend of mine. I, I mean, I actually know him, and he really knows his stuff. Uh, he's created a lot of commercials that you've seen. <laughs> You're a fix. I can relate to the car thing. I mean, part of the things is, and I think this provides hope for people, I was dirt poor. I know what it's like to take your CDs to the pawn shop. I know what it's like to not have gas. I mean, I saw someone... And I was going to try to do it, but he left too quick. I saw someone come into the gas station last night and put $3 in his tank. And I know what that feeling is like. You're putting $3 in your tank because that's all you got. You know, I remember those days where I would go to this gas station and put $5. I rolled to this gas station with my coin jug. And, I, and the dude was just like, he just like, you know what? Keep it. You need 20. He took a 20 out of his pocket and he 
gave I said I don't, it actually only holds like fifteen dollars. Fine, fine. You fill up, no problem. You take you and your coins, you go. Uh, another story. Uh, I had a car, my first car, that I repossessed from my mother. Uh, the gas gauge went out, so I always had to kind of keep it full. I was going to Northside Hospital to pick up my check, and ran out of gas. A dude picked me up. He had a gas can. He actually gave me money. This is the stuff I went through. So I understand being poor, but the thing is, some of you like being poor because you ain't doing nothing to change it. And th these are just facts. You got to be about change because that, and the thing is, what's going to happen if you stay that way, your children are going to inherit your poverty mindset with all this opportunity out here. Archangel, Jerry wins. I've been watching all week. We will know shortly. The financial man <laughs> is here for the clients. Oh, no, this car actually had power windows and stuff. But, you know, if it, if I couldn't, it, I mean, the AC and windows and stuff would work. But I remember many a night, I would actually kind of wait until people left because I worked second shift. I didn't want anyone to see me. Then I got really good at it. So I would just like. Sometimes I could start it off in reverse, but I tried to park it where I could um, go down because it was just safer. Driving a VW 73 Beta. Whoa. Chris McDonald, Hoopty Logistics. <laughs> I'm all ready. All right. All right. Sure thing, Nightwolf. Oh, let's see. Let me see where we go. Uh, save your games. I'll do that in a minute. Archangel, yes, you can. The China Hustle? Hmm. If you want to put it at E Rock 344, if you want to put it as continuing education, CZ hot that we're we're in New York and that's so true. Here where we're trying to get my hustle kung fu on. Yeah, I mean New York, the uh, the rent in New York is is hideous. It's heinous. You got people paying three thousand dollars to live in an apartment with roommates. It's rough because like twenty five hundred, you in the hood. Twenty five hundred, you in the hood. Fifteen hundred, you are in the hood hood. Uh, I have a beat up truck. It worked well for hauling crap and it's paid for. A lot of the stuff that will make you money ain't really that sexy. Dang, Johnny Walton, you got me beat. I had to take gas out of a lawnmower so I could have enough gas to get to the station. You got me beat on that one. I, I, I didn't even have a lawnmower. We lived in an apartment, so at that time. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, boom, doo -doo -doo -doo. This is the new thing in the links below because I actually got it set up where I wasn't doing stuff last minute. Hustler Kung Fu Books. Uh, Patty's probably be finished sometime next week. There'll be 20 plus courses. Well, 20, 20 plus books, mini courses to help you move ahead to the next level. Low grade hustles to make you 500, 1500 bucks a month to balance out your situation. And let's go to. Where is it? Did I get rid of it? Ah, there it is. All right, so let me just blow it up. The deal of the day, that's it. That's the code. So I will leave that like you know I do for a few hours. So go ahead and grab that. And let's go back to actual size. As you can see, I'm doing a lot of different stuff here. You know, we changed up Fat Cat Secrets. This is what I'm per currently working on. And it's my intention to get all of this done before I move on to something else. I've enhanced the Never Broke Action Pack. Just letting you know. That's there. And what I'm going to try to do is keep the best deals on the front page. So I still got work to do. Because uh, there's a lot here. And I got to clean up a lot of stuff. Um, so... That's what's going on. 
that's how you can get ahead. And, you know, it's Thursday. Joshua Hill. Hey, Glennon, how did you promote your first few views when you started? Joshua Hill, I started in 2009 and YouTube was a different animal. Essentially, you put videos, they got saw because the scene because they're just, I don't think you guys really understand the level of video inventory that has increased in nine years. When I start, I had no competition. I'm not going to sit here and go like, well, I was really smart. No. I threw up, matter of fact, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the first video that I put up on YouTube. And I'm actually going to come out of some of these because when I start opening up other tabs, start slowing down. So we'll go back into time. All right. Come on, come on. Uh, let's see. So we will sort by date yeah. this was my very first video and that was eight years and some months ago August 6th that's going to be nine years and I'll begin my 10th year on YouTube that's crazy it's just crazy but that's the first video that's it and back then, you didn't, I mean, YouTube was just so brand new. And it, it was just, um, it was an incredible opportunity. I'm really glad that I started when I did. Uh, because doing what I did in 2009, that would not work today. It would fail instantly. It would not work today because it's just too much competition. When I say competition, there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's Snapchat, there's this blog, there's this news story. All of that is a competition for attention. Rockstone, no doubt. Glennon called out at age 29, had them Barney Rubble brakes would drive it in the back rows and put it in neutral 100 yards before stop signs. We got a lot of folks here with these uh, hoopty, hoopty logistics stories. Save your games. Uh, appreciate the videos. And of course, this just got me and my mom out of the boarding house on Monday. Time to get with it. Wow, man. Wow. Save your games. Uh, yeah, Patty is um, clearly. Well, she's doing something. Well, I don't know. She actually left early because she's got an appointment. Hustlers, Kung Fu. Customer service. E at Gmail. I come. So there you go. Man, we got this hoopty logistics club here. Uh, when the gas tank on E, I call it easy ride and keep taking action, people, as I will. <laughs> so I can get rid of my bag of get rid of my bag of coins. Now, nah, man, I'm I'm telling you, because the thing is, I had someone to say, you didn't go through that. And I was like, no, I had those experiences. You can't take those away from me. I went through that. And th this is, you know, proof positive that you can change your social economic class because uh, I'll be doing videos about that. You got to. You have no choice, especially if you have kids. You've got to change your socioeconomic class. You, you got to. All right. So y'all know what the deal is. You know what the code is. I'm getting ready to go. Just leave some nice comments after this video renders. And I will see you guys tomorrow at probably 530. We'll just say 530 because I'm going to I'm not going to because I'm probably move these to five, but I'm not going to do it like Gangster style, but 5.30 Friday stream. And I'm going to start sending out the notification probably a little earlier. I think I sent it out like an hour today. That's probably as long as I'm going to do it. 
because I've tested that and I start sending stuff out like the day before and people forget. All right. So uh, I will see you guys later. Thanks for joining me. You have a great day. You can get those courses for 40% off. Grab them today and I will see you tomorrow.